Hello everyone, my guest today is David Farley. He is the CEO and founder of a company called Luxie. The URL is luxiesleep.com, competing in a hyper-competitive space, but he's integrating old and new approaches. We're gonna jump in. David, are you ready to take us to the top? Uh, I'll give it a try. All right, tell us about Luxie. What do you guys do and how do you make money? <laughs> well, making money is a challenge, you know, but um, I think the uh, the answer to that is uh, perseverance and, and being as smart as we can possibly be in the space that we're in where things are changing as rapidly as they are. Yeah, so, so it's a, no, one know, no one knows what this product is, right? So at least maybe not. Tell us what the product does. Well, we're, uh, we're involved in the online bed-in-the-box uh, mattress uh, uh, segment. Uh, there's a lot of competition in that uh, segment, and there are leaders that are way larger than most of the folks that are in the in the pack. I would say that we're in the middle of the pack. Uh, we've got an interesting profile in that the product's unique and that we've had uh, a lot of years of manufacturing experience as it relates to products like this. And bed in the box is really not a new idea. We were doing it for healthcare 30 years ago. But uh, What do you mean by that, doing it for healthcare? Uh, I, my background or the company's background is in the healthcare field. Our uh, expertise is the fabrication of urethane foam and manufacturing of products that are like orthopedic soft goods and so forth. We also eventually became the manufacturers of some hospital or healthcare mattress products that we put I see. in compressed format for distribution to the acute care hospitals around the country almost uh, 25 years ago. I see. So you were shipping beds and boxes to hospitals 20 years ago. Yeah, quite a long time. So ago. why the heck do these guys like Casper on Purple, how do they get so much market share so quick? Well, they were, they were, um, the, the strategy was, was perfect. The, uh, the planning, uh, the pre-launch, the uh, capital uh, commitment was all done uh, wisely by these folks that have done such a great job of blowing up the segment. You know, the betting industry is a $15 billion industry and right now about 20% of it is uh, in the what I'll call the segment, this offline, either startups or other off other uh, circumstances where consumers are buying products today, buying mattresses today that they haven't even seen or felt or sat on, let alone slept on. And uh, so the segment uh, was maybe 6% four years ago. So there's been a couple billion dollars worth of transformation that's taken place. And about half of that's been done by the five companies that are leading the uh, the segment. So, so name a few. I got Casper Purple. Who else? Uh, well, Casper Purple, um, Tuft and Needle would be uh, uh, Nectar is in that group. Saf is number three. Uh, by order of uh, uh, sales volume, it's Casper Purple, uh, Saf, uh, and then uh, Tuft and Needle and uh, Nectar are round out the top five. I see. Those those five out of 150 are doing better than 50% of the transformation volume. And give me a general sense of where you're at. So last 12 months, total sales? About 5 million. Okay, five million. how many mattresses is that? Uh, well, it's a couple thousand. A couple thousand, okay. Between 1,000 and 5,000? Yes. Okay, and where have you, how have you driven most of those sales? Well, we've been um, uh, managing our, our online retail site for the better part of two and a half years now. So uh, most of the business has emanated from that site. However, we've made a shift and the shift occurred just at the first of this year where we've reached back to some uh, more traditional distribution that we're familiar with from our, our past life, if you will. And uh, we're taking to them uh, in a very uh, cooperative way our uh, uh, some of the tools that we are using online and making them available to, to, to retailers in an effort to uh, develop our own retail distribution network amongst the, uh, let's say, the medium and the smaller sized retailers across the country, traditional brick and mortar bedding specialty shops. But OK, so what percent right now, last 12 months of the five million, how much has come through e-commerce? Yeah, right now we're about 50-50. We're running about half and half. Okay, 50% e-commerce. And give me a sense of, I want to put this on a timeline and then talk about how you're funding this. So when did you launch the company officially? Uh, well, the company, <laughs> the mattress around, portion, the, the, the current project was launched just the first of this year. Oh, wow. Okay. So fairly new then. Yes. So well, that, we've, we've been in, we've been in product, uh, uh, market, uh, research for the last couple of years and the company's been longstanding. It's a 27 year old company. Yeah. But I just want to talk about what I go when I go to luxysleep.com and I see the Luxie one, right? This product you're saying you just started selling January 1st, 2018. 
that's that's true. We've just started selling the Luxie product in, in that format currently at this year. I see. And you've done five million so far this year in sales. Uh, we're projecting five for the end of the year. For the end of the year. Okay, very good. And how are so? How are people finding the website? How are you getting traffic? Well, it's uh, you know a little bit of advertising and and Facebook and Google you know are the primary you know go tos and we've got uh, a lot of great affiliates. Uh, I would say that we've found that the advertising, the cost of acquisition is becoming very very difficult to manage, and so a lot more work is being done. Do you mean unprofitable? It's getting more competitive. Oh my gosh, yes. The the cost of advertising in this segment with the leaders uh, at the volume, at the run rates that they're at. You understand we're at a $5 million run rate and the leaders that are, are at a $500 million run rate. What did Casper do the last 12 months? Uh, they did, a, they're, they're, they're approaching the $500 million run rate as best we can tell. Interesting. Okay. Um, I want to understand more uh, about kind of like the, the, the structure on like one of these queens. So let's just dial in the 799, the Luxy One mattress, the queen size. That's what you charge, 799. On that, let's just call it 800. What do you spend to actually manufacture this thing? Say that again? What do you spend to actually manufacture the $800 queen size Luxy One? Something less than 50% of that number will be true for manufacturing costs across the board. Okay. Across the margins on man, on manufacturing are run in the high 50% range. Okay. So less than 400 bucks to, to, to build that $800 queen mattress. And then typically per sale, what are you paying out to like affiliates or other customer acquisition costs? A couple hundred bucks. Okay. The average cost of acquisition today for all of our products averaged across all of the, all of the items. So what do you like to take them to the bottom line on $800 mattress? How much will you make? Well, we're 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 trying to we're trying to make net net profit after everything in the five to seven percent range. Okay, and are you hitting that so far this year? Yes, we actually are, but we're not moving our volume up. We're hanging tight with uh, uh, keeping keeping it very controlled, if you will, yep. and uh, very easy to overspend on marketing. Very easy. To yeah, do. this is tough, though. I mean, you know, David, when I'm looking at this, so I mean, if you eight eight hundred bucks for the queen. Let's say you manage to a 5% net net, right? I mean, that's 40 bucks that you're making bottom line on an $800 sale. And then, mm -hmm. you know, if you sold between one and 5,000 mattresses, let's assume best case scenario, you've sold 5,000 mattresses times 40 bucks per mattress to the bottom line. That's 200 grand net net to the bottom line, uh, you know, this year, if you do that 5 million in sales. Now, is that before or after salaries for your team? Oh, no, that's net net. That's after everything. Okay, that's after everything. Okay, very good. That makes more sense. Um, and where will you spend that money? Where, where will you reinvest in the company to pay out dividends, do a rev share across the team? What do you do? Well, the emphasis right now is on partnering with traditional brick and mortar, which requires quite a bit of capital, actually. To open retail stores, you need to get in with point of purchase materials and so forth. You need to man a, a team that, that's there for uh, not only closing the transaction, but also supporting in terms of... Uh, uh, training and so forth. And so uh, for the next 12 months or so, our focus is really on uh, bringing on the traditional retailer to give them the benefit of what we've accomplished at this point. You know, most of the traditional retailers, I'm calling them kind of the, the retail group that's being left behind. Here's the trick for what our market strategy really is for the next 12 months. We can't offer those, those retailers or not having easy access to the top brands. The top brands were tied up in much bigger deals with much bigger retailers. And on the other hand, most of the smaller re uh, uh, competitors of ours have turned to, uh, to Amazon for distribution. So we come to a retailer clean of that with an opportunity to share in, in a cooperative way what we're up to online and provide them with, a, with the kind of support that they find, you know, it's pretty difficult for small uh, chain retailers to launch and be effective in digital marketing. They've all got, they've all got websites, but they're all really not doing much in real terms of digital marketing. And David, have you bootstrapped this or raised capital? No, we bootstrapped the whole thing for the present time. Okay. Now you're raising capital right now. You're listed on startengine.com. Walk me through what you're doing here. Well, really what we're, we're doing is a, is a kind of a first uh, exercise in uh, putting this story together and, well, we were fascinated with uh, equity crowdfunding as a concept, and so we've given that a bit of a spin. We're looking forward for another 30 days or so to finishing up that uh, that effort. However, we're currently in uh, some conversations with other uh, private equity, uh, 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 very much a, a round type, you know, of uh, uh, participants 
because I think we've really got a, a great idea and uh, we seem to have a pretty good um, audience at the present time. Uh, so I think I expect that we're going to be raising additional capital. We need to. We've got the opportunity to grow quite rapidly. We're not meeting any resistance in the field, if you will. And so, so, David, just to be clear, anyone listening right now could go to startengine.com and invest to support the brand. And what are they actually getting? So right now you have 35 investors. They've put up $26,550. If someone listening right now goes and clicks invest, the minimum is 250 it looks like. What do they get for that? Oh, they get shares of, of micro uh, security in the company. So it's real. Yeah. It's if they put in 250 bucks as a minimum, they actually get shares in the company. Yeah, this is crowdfunding. It's a, it's a SEC, you know, regulated in transaction. It's a security. That's the the result of it. And if you want to get a little deeper into it, go to go to uh, Start Engine and take a look at the offering memorandum. You'll see that it's all in line with. Uh, a formal equity um, raise. Yep. No, it's great. And you also have perks. Invest a thousand bucks and receive a $200 discount on your next Luxie mattress. I love how you've kind of built up this incentive structure. I hope it, uh, I hope it closes out nicely for you. Walk me to the private equity firms. Uh, what kind of valuations are they offering you? What kind of deal would you get? Well, that's all to be uh, determined. We're in the middle of that negotiation right now, which was really sparked because of the exposure that we got from the start engine campaign. Mm -hmm. What, 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 how is a mattress company with five to 7% net net margins? How's it valued typically? Um, it's valued on the basis of maybe three or four times revenue. Top line. Top line. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, that's, that's pretty sick. E even though you're only bringing five to 7% to the bottom line. Yes. Interesting. So you're that's saying not, that's, that's net net again, you're, you're thinking more in terms of uh, multiples of, of the margin. Uh, the gross margin. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking net net margin after salaries, after sales expenses, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. I'm I'm talking net net bottom line right before taxes. Yeah, um, interesting. So just to be clear, if you do if you have five million and you're projecting five million in sales for 2018, and by the way, you're on track for that. Uh, we are on track for it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, if you sell five million and you're thinking five to you know six or seven or eight x, I mean, you're talking 25, 30 million dollar pre money valuation kind of range, huh? Yeah. We this thing could get very big very quickly. It's just a, a, the opportunity. In the segment, the the marketing that work that's been done ahead of us has been uh, quite effective. It's a, it's a legitimate um, you know transformation of a of the betting retail industry. Are uh, you the sole founder? Are you, you're the only one on the cap table right now. I'm the only one. Yeah, with the exception of what we're doing on on uh, Start Engine. Start. Mm -hmm. So if someone came to you and offered you twenty million bucks to buy the whole company, and then wanted you to keep running it and gave you a twenty percent of the company back to keep running it. Is that would you do that deal? Oh, sure. That's, that would be a deal of a lifetime. Interesting. Very good. All right, David, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, oh, my goodness. Um, I, I, I don't know. Shake the, shake the World. I, 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 I'm not sure if I got the title exactly right. All right. Shake the World. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Not particularly, no. Number three, what is your favorite online tool for building your business? Um. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, we, we work in Shopify and there's, if, if there's something that we need to do internally, it's, 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 a, it's more of the communication of the tools that are available there to, for the sake of information exchange amongst the, the company. Number four, what's your, uh, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? I get about seven. Come on, dude. That's where you go, Nathan. I sleep 24 hours a day. These beds are so comfortable, I can barely get out of them. Hey, check this out, Nathan. At the turn of the century, the, com the country, our com our government began to collect statistics on how many hours per night folks slept. As a society, we've got a number, and then we've got a new number today, which is you know 110 years or 118 years later, right? So, how do those two numbers compare? The turn of the century, almost nine hours. Today. Less than seven. That's correct. I, I'm of great sleeper. I'll never brag about not getting sleep. I sleep at least eight or nine hours a day and I take probably an hour nap in the middle of every day. So, you oh know, so I'm with you. You're, you're an outsider. I'll tell you. That's I'm uh, Yeah, I'm with you there. And so, David, let's round this out here. What's your situation? Married, single kids? Uh, I've been married for, for uh, 48 years and I have a couple of children. One of them is working with the project with me. And I've How got many the, kids? I've got two children, two daughters and three grandchildren. All right. You know what that means, David? The mattress is working. It's clearly comfortable. 40 year marriage, two kids. It's working. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And uh, how old are you today? How old am I? Yep. 
Well, 72. 72. Last question. What do you wish you're, you're not, are you, are you 72? I am. Wow. You look great for 72. Okay. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? What, what was that? When you were 20, what do you wish you knew? Um, that, that I, that the intensity that I had for what I was up to at the time needed to be pulled back a little bit. And the ride could have been a little more fun to this point if I'd have done that. Guys, pull back intensity a little bit to enjoy the ride coming from David. Again, really, you know, w- you know, riding on the back of this craze, which is kind of, you know, uh, mattress in a box uh, happening. He's do- doing well, right? Lux is a great technology. They really pioneered a lot of this stuff with mattresses and boxes to, to, to hospitals almost 20 years ago. They'll do 5 million bucks in revenue this year. That's selling between 1,000 and 5,000 mattresses, 50% e-commerce, 50% offline. Margins on an $800 queen bed, the Luxie one they sell, less than 400 bucks of that is dedicated to manufacturing. They manage then down to the bottom, bottom line. So net, net five to 7% there, uh, hoping to scale, hoping to grow, looking to potentially raise capital. You can check them out on startengine.com. David, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. Appreciate it.